Hi, I'm Dave Gustafson, the Pennsylvania Game Commission's Forestry Program Manager. Today we're in McKean County, Pennsylvania on state game lands in the heart of whitetail country. And we're going to talk a little bit about forest habitats and how whitetails use them in the winter. When we think of deer and winter habitats, sometimes we may think of one particular type of habitat that they need during winter more than they may need other times of the year. But in general, there is no single habitat that deer need during the winter. They need a variety of habitats just as they do during other times of year. Uh, in our research, we have deer with GPS collars that give us detailed locations at regular intervals. And with that information, we can and see some examples of the types of habitat that deer are using during winter. When we're discussing how white-tailed deer use habitat in the forest, we have to think about how those habitat types are arranged on the landscape in both space and in time to meet all the needs of deer throughout the seasons. Today we're talking about how whitetails use winter habitat and what they need in both food and cover to meet their survival needs. When thinking about what deer need for food to survive through the winter in the Big Woods country, we're talking about woody browse. And in this case, where I'm standing, we have blackberry briars that have recently grown from this summer. We have tree seedling regeneration growing up. And these are the things that deer eat to survive through the winter time, especially when the mast crop from the fall has already been eaten. Right here, right here, you can see how they're eating on the ends of all these blackberry briar plants. Can you see that? That's nipped, that's nipped, that's nipped, that's nipped all along the edges of the trail. You see all the ends of these blackberry briars. In Pennsylvania, your average adult deer is going to need about five pounds of food during the winter. Uh, most of that will be browse. Uh, so you're looking at basically filling up a five gallon bucket full of browse every day throughout the entire winter for that deer to survive. At our first stop talking about how whitetails use winter habitats, we saw a recently harvested stand of timber that created browse on the forest floor for deer to use. Now we're standing in a timber harvest area that's approximately 12 years old. And as you can see, it's much thicker. There's a lot more stems. And this creates two components of deer habitat in one, which is both food and cover. At this site, you can see lots of woody browse. And when we talk about browse, we're looking at things like I hold in my hand. In our northern hardwood forest, the deer can take advantage of things like hemlock, white pine, blackberry briars, red maple, sugar maple. This is what constitutes the core of a whitetail's diet in the big woods in the wintertime. The other key component of winter whitetail habitat that these 10 to 12 year old timber harvest areas provide is cover. And when we talk about cover, there's two things to talk about. We have security cover, which is created by stem density and vegetation, provides a place for whitetails to hide. The other part of cover that's important for winter whitetail habitat is shelter cover. I'm standing now in a hemlock forest type, which provides for the other key component of winter whitetail habitat, which is cover. Uh, hemlock forests such as this can often moderate temperatures up to 10 to 15 degrees uh, from the surrounding open forests. And this provides deer an opportunity for a place to get out of the wind, seek shelter, find places where the snow is not, not as deep be able to forage for food, and as you can see what I'm holding in my hand, the hemlock branch, not only does this provide cover, but they will also use this as critical winter browse in the harshest of conditions. Behind me, you'll see a stage of forest development that doesn't present as much value for whitetail habitat in the winter. Young forests in the 30-year-old pole stage or stem exclusion phase of development no longer provide the browse or the security cover that whitetails need in the wintertime. But in approximately 20 years, this forest will start producing mast, which is another important whitetail food component in the fall and early winter. When we talk about regeneration and deer management, a lot of times it's thought of as simply the timber side. I mean, you want to grow more larger trees for eventual timber harvest. It's important to remember that regeneration is talking about the young trees that are the primary food source for whitetail deer during winter. So those young trees serve two purposes. One, they feed today's deer, and those trees also will become the forest of tomorrow. Today we wanted to share with you some of the important features of what makes up great whitetail habitat for the wintertime. 
in these forested landscapes, it's really important that we have food and cover available within a deer's home range. And that's what makes up the best whitetail habitats.